Namaskar, hello and welcome to CIET and CRT's live phone and interactive program. My name is Tanvi Karana and all the 8th class students you are watching us on PME with their channel number 8. In this science class, we are going to discuss the topic microorganisms, friends and foes. So what exactly about microorganisms are we going to discuss in this particular session? That information will be given to you by our expert and she is Ms. Manisha Sharma. Welcome ma'am. Thank you so much. Namaskar. Ma'am is PGT in Chemistry from Mata Day School, New Delhi. And if you have any questions, any queries, please reach out to us. Give us a call on our number 8800440559. Or if you want to email us, the email ID would be dth.class8 at the rate ciet.nic.in. You can also visit our YouTube channel and CERT official in the live chat box. Write down your questions, queries and send them to us. So let's begin this discussion and uh, let me ask our expert, ma'am, what exactly are we going to uh, learn or understand about microorganisms in this particular program? Over to you, ma'am. From all my class date students here and in this talk, we are going to discuss about microorganisms. What are microorganisms? Microorganisms are of course those organisms which are very, very, very small and you are not able to see them through your naked eye. So what do you need to see them? You need a microscope to see them. So that is why all together they are known as microbes or microorganisms. Now there are plenty of microorganisms available like bacteria, fungi, protozoa and some algae also. Next slide. These bacteria are there right there in front of you on the screen with spiral bacteria and broad shaped bacteria. If you clearly look at them, spiral bacteria have some spiral shaped, the spring shaped kind of bacteria, while the broad shaped are kind of capsules or broad shaped ones. Next slide. These are some of the types of algae. These are very much found in uh, so many water samples and you will be able to see how minute and how tiny they are. Next slide. These are some of the types of paramecium, amoeba, paramecium. The paramecium looks like a slipper and amoeba doesn't have any fixed shape. Next slide. These are some of the types of fungi. So you can see the microorganisms here. Next slide. These are the virus. Now we all have been battling for this corona virus for two years now. So this is one of those categories of virus and even coronavirus is one of the microorganisms and that is why we were unable to detect its presence in our body or in our family members as well. Next slide. Now where do these microorganisms live? Because they are very, very, very minute, they survive under different conditions. They might be surviving under very, very hot, humid conditions. Some of them might be surviving in ice cold climate. Some of them even inside, uh, residing inside the human body. Some of them may be inside the soil. So they are available every, everywhere. So wherever they have their suitable conditions, they'll be able to make their home there and they will start residing. Next slide. Now these are, there are some friendly microorganisms also. Not every microorganism is very harmful like coronavirus. We do have certain microorganisms which we are consuming in our daily life. How many of you love to eat cake? Just, just let me know. How many of you love to eat bread every morning? And how many of you are die-hard fans of curd? You know, some of you must be there without curd, we can't eat dal bhi nahi khasa. Mm -hmm. So all these curd, bread, cake, pizza, they all are made up of microorganism and the microorganism present in them is called yeast. So they are friendly microorganisms and as I said not every microorganism is toxic and problematic. So these are some of the microorganisms which we are even consuming. Yes, they might not be very healthy for our body, that's why we say don't eat junk food, but they are even not toxic, right? So. And there are certain microorganisms, certain bacteria, which are even used for preparing medicines. 
um, there is something which is called lactobacillus. You might have heard every time we have loose motions or you have stomach upset. Your mothers must have given you curd because the curd has that antibiotic properties, the medicinal properties, and it helps. If you are into gardening or if anybody in your family loves gardening, I'm sure you must have seen them putting a lot of fertilizers every month so that the crop yield, the fruits, the plants, whatever they are growing are growing with good uh, yield. So that is also done by the help of microorganisms. Next slide. Uh, Ma'am, here, can I ask a question? Yes, yes. So you mentioned that uh, in curd and bread there are microorganisms. So we all know that the bread of pizza is very spongy and soft. Uh, is it related to uh, something like that? Okay, yes. Because, see, we are using yeast here, right? Mm -hmm. So this yeast is mixing up with the flour and producing a lot of carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide, I'm sure you all have drunk, you know, cold drinks and all. So you shake them very hard and then you turn it on. What happens if you just uncap it? What happens? It just comes out with a lot of pressure. That's because of carbon dioxide. So that carbon dioxide enables this bread, pizza bread to rise. Once they rise, even the cake batter, they rise. So once they rise, they automatically it becomes very spongy, very soft. And then you love munching that. Okay. Okay. Next slide. Yes. Okay, so making of curd, this is, these are some of the examples which we are doing every day and I feel that science is available in the kitchen. So kitchen is the best laboratory to do science experiments. Most of the experiments can be done there. So how do you make curd? You take a little amount of already formed curd which has this lactobacillus bacteria. And your mothers must be taking this lukewarm milk and she must be adding one spoon of this already formed curd. Automatically, the territory of this bacteria is increasing in that milk sample. So what happens? You add an only one spoon of this curd and now the territory, the residence of this bacteria is increasing and all together the entire milk sample then converts into curd. So that is how the curd is made. Next slide. How do you make bread? Because just now, ma'am also asked the same question. No? So I told you, yeast is now added to the flour sample. Now what happened? This yeast is again expanding its territory, again expanding its resonance. So what happens? It spreads, it comes all together. The dough that you have prepared becomes a little more higher or a little more in volume and automatically now you can prepare any curry cake, any bread, pastry, pizza and that's going to be super super soft. Next slide. Now what are the commercial uses of microorganism? As I said we have a lot of microorganisms which are friendly. Now there are certain microorganisms which we are using in the industrial or commercial purposes also like for the production of alcohol, for the production of wine, for the production of vinegar, which is scientifically known as acetic acid. So vinegar, all of us have vinegar sample in our homes because we love making pasta, we love making noodles, right? Alcohol and wine samples also do have these microorganisms because they are made up of the fruit samples and then these fruit samples are added with microorganisms so that they ferment. It is very important that they are fermented. How are they going to ferment? All these wine, alcohol, they are nothing but, you know, the combination or the sugars, whatever present in grains like wheat, barley, rice, and even crushed fruit juices. I'm sure you must have seen certain movies where there are big containers, there are grapes there, and everybody is crushing those grapes with their foots, full feet, right? So that is the way they crush these fruit samples and the process of conversion of this sugar into alcohol is known as fermentation. So that's why the alcohol and wine sample, if you have ever smelled, uh, is a little, you know, uh, tangy or, you know, a little different in uh, flavor and or a different uh, in the smell. Next slide. Now there is this activity for you. What you can do is just take a small glass. It's written 500 ml beaker, but since you people are doing it at home, you can take a glass. Fill it with water, 3 fourth water. So if you have full glass, you have to fill it till here, right? Now you add 2-3 teaspoons of sugar to it. 
and then you add yeast powder. It is very easily available in any departmental store. You just say yeast powder and dairy, and you mix this and you keep it covered. After four to five hours, you will see there's a lot of change in the beaker. Observe the change. Smell the solution. See if you can smell it. See how does it smell like. See what the you know color is. Maybe you can take the pictures and then show it to your science teacher. And of course, she will you know appreciate you. So this is the activity for you. Next slide. Now, what what are we going to appreciate, or what are we going to observe? As I said, you will be observing the process of fermentation. What is basically happening? You have added sugar, and this yeast is now converting the sugar into the alcohol. Sum. So that is the fermentation part. Next slide. Now, medicinal uses of microorganisms. As I have already said, that there are certain, you know, medicines, certain capsules where the microorganisms are used in day-to-day -day life. Whenever our stomach is upset, we use the microorganisms in form of curd. But otherwise, also every time because the summers are approaching, many of you might have stomach upset, stomach infection, intestinal infection, or urine infection, or any of those things, right? And your doctor suggests some antibiotics. All these antibiotics have microorganisms present in them. Of course, these microorganisms are consumable. You can eat them. And there are certain antibiotics, very, very common names like streptomycin, tetracycline, erythromycin. These are some of the antibiotics which are used for the medicinal purposes as well. Next slide. Otherwise, also there are lots of microorganisms which we use for animals also, and for poultry, for the livestock, and even for microbial infection in animals. So microorganisms have a very, very you know huge uh, usage, or I would say huge application in living beings, be it male, female, or human beings, or plants, or animals. Microorganisms have a great impact on all of these, specifically the medicinal applications. Next slide. Now, who was after this discovery of microorganisms? Alexander Fleming was the first person to work on this culture of disease-causing bacteria, and he found that you know there were some spores of these green molds, just come on Hindi mein fungus ya fungi bhi bolte hai na. Now with that. I ask you a question. What happens? Suppose now the schools have started. No. What happens if you miss your tiffin box for a day, and next day you go and take your tiffin box and you bring it home back? What is your mother reaction? She's going to say, "Yeah, I have to clean this. I don't want to clean this because there's a lot of fungus inside your tiffin box." And imagine you forgot that box on a Friday. Saturday, Sunday was a holiday, and Monday you are taking it back. Probably your mother will faint with the smell, right? <laughs> so the fungus, the bacteria, the microorganisms. I said they just need a little, you know, favorable conditions for them, and they will start forming their territories, right? So Alexander Fleming was the man behind this discovery of microorganisms. Next slide, please. Edward Jenner is another scientist who actually worked on this smallpox vaccine. Now there was this pandemic or epidemic, as you can say, of smallpox, and we really needed a vaccine, just like we needed a COVID vaccine. So Edward Jenner worked on the antibiotic which could work against the smallpox thing. So then the medicine was created, and that medicine had antibiotic who could fight with this smallpox disease, and so the vaccine was created. Next slide. Now, how do you increase the soil fertility? As I said, we are adding a lot of microorganisms to our garden uh, soil, to the park, to the gardens, to the crops, to the fields. Now, what are these microbes doing? They are basically fixing the nitrogen. They, this ma uh, microorganism is basically enriching the nitrogen present in the soil and taking it from the atmosphere as well. And that's how the fertility of the soil is increasing. Next slide, please. Now there are certain harmful microorganisms also. Now not every microorganism is friendly. There are certain harmful microorganisms also, and these harmful microorganisms are present in a lot of things. If you keep something wet in your cupboard, 
and you open it up the sometime, you would see that the wood, the covered wood is gone, is spoiled. Spoiled food, your leather clothes. I am sure you all have observed your mothers packing your winter clothes, putting them in the cupboard, placing them with the neem leaves, right? Or probably the nephilim balls. Why are they doing so? Because the wool, the woolen clothes are made up of wool which is a natural fiber. Now natural fiber attracts all these microorganisms very easily. Neem leaves also act as an antimicrobe thing. So we spread neem leaves on naphthalene balls so that the microorganisms do not attack our clothes or our belongings or our stuff. So there are these harmful microorganisms also. Of course they are not very visible but you will be able to see that there is decoloration in your clothes. You will be able to see that the wood is going away. You will see that there are certain stains on certain things. And you will be able to know that the thing has been attacked by the microorganisms. Next slide please. Now there are disease causing microorganisms also. And majorly these microorganisms are available through the water sample or the food that we eat. Majorly during the summer uh, time, we normally prefer not to eat outside because the water quality or the food quality is affected. We are sweating also and so there can be a lot of diseases which can be caused through these microorganisms. So in short, now if I can summarize because I'm sure you'll be running out of time. So in short, if I'm going to summarize this entire thing, microorganisms are not bad things, right? They are friendly also, but they are harmful also. They have their who, uh, you know, benefits as well as they have their problems also. So as the chapter says, microorganisms, friends or foe, we would say they are both. And they are useful in both the ways. Because since we have friendly microorganisms, of course there will be, you know, harmful microorganisms. We can't get rid of them. If we get rid of the entire community of microorganisms, then we are gone with the friendly microorganisms also. So keeping that in mind, it is important that we take care of the microorganisms, we deal with them properly and during these summer days, I would suggest you to drink healthy, eat healthy and stay healthy. Thank you so much. Thank you ma'am and we wish the same for you too. Be healthy, Thanks. stay healthy. Thank you. It was a wonderful session. Thank you so much for all the valuable input you just gave us regarding microorganisms. Thank you once again. Thank you to all the viewers for watching this entire session and I'm sure you agree with uh, ma'am on all the points she said about microorganisms. So in summers, yes, please uh, drink a lot of water, stay healthy and uh, stay happy as well. Keep on watching NCRT official our YouTube channel because upcoming next is a maths class or program and we'll be discussing understanding quadrilaterals part one. So stay here, don't go anywhere and keep your questions ready. Till then, take care. Namaskar.